Hi, I'm Dr. Chow, and I'm your kidney doctor. Take a look around. This is my consultation room. The reason why we are seeing you today is to go through your blood test results. I've gone through your blood test, and I need to tell you something. Despite our best efforts to control your kidney disease, your current state of kidney basically shows that it has been severely damaged. And the reason most probably is due to the long-standing poorly controlled diabetes and hypertension that has occurred over many, many months. We need to talk about dialysis. Dialysis is a form of treatment in patients with kidney disease. What you have now is called chronic kidney disease or CKD. CKD is essentially a silent disease most of the time because most patients do not have symptoms with CKD. But however, kidney disease will continue to progress, kidney function will continue to deteriorate. Fortunately, there are treatment available. With treatment, with vigorous control of blood pressure and sugar, most patients would be able to avoid dialysis. However, despite all of the best efforts, some patients still have got deteriorating kidney function, and they will reach a stage where the accumulation of toxin in the blood would then be, be detrimental to health. And in those situations, dialysis would then be clearly required. The commonest form of dialysis is called hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is called blood purification. Essentially, what this process does is that blood will be drawn from the patient to the dialysis machine for blood purification and the purified blood would then be returned to the patient. For this process to happen, the nurse needs to put two needles into the patient's veins. All these things need preparation. The first step is actually to see a surgeon. And the reason why you need to see a surgeon is to create a small procedure under local anesthesia called the arterial venous fistula or called the AVF. Essentially, what an AVF is, is a connection which is made between the artery, which is where you feel the pulse, and to the veins, which is the blood vessel that you see in your forearm. This connection would enable blood from the artery, which is supposed to flow to the hand. Part of it will get short-circuited into the veins, making the vein bigger to enable the nurse to be able to put two needles so that the dialysis process can be as optimum as possible. I know what you're thinking. You don't want to do the fistula. And the reason is because you feel that you are okay. But trust me, I'm advising you to do the AVF as fast as possible because it takes four to six weeks for the AVF to mature. If you delay in all this fistula creation, and if you one day, if you need dialysis, the doctor would then have no choice but to put a plastic tube down your neck. That would lead to a lot of complications like infection, it would obviously increase treatment costs, and at the end of the day, you will still need to do the ABF. To make you understand better, I want you to visit my dialysis unit and I will introduce to you my dialysis patient, Ritwan. Come, let's go. Okay, so this is my dialysis unit. And this is Ridwan. And he's currently undergoing hemodialysis. As I've mentioned just now, this is how hemodialysis is performed. There is a scar here, as you know, and that denotes the place where the surgeon actually made the connection called the arterial venous fistula. The process of dialysis is generally quite simple. The first needle would draw blood from the patient. It would then go into the dialysis machine through the artificial kidney, which is called the dialyzer. Purified blood would then come out and then it gets returned back to the patient. This process usually takes about four hours and the treatment schedule is usually three times a week. 
there is some financial cost attached to hemodialysis. It's usually costs two to four thousand a month to maintain a patient on dialysis. Is dialysis painful? Generally, no. Yeah. The most that the patient would feel is some discomfort doing, during the initial insertion of the needles into the veins, but subsequently it's supposed to be smooth and pain-free. Most patients subsequently should be able to watch TV, read a book or even go to sleep. There are also other forms of renal replacement therapy. The second is called peritoneal dialysis, in which a silicon catheter is inserted by the doctor into the abdominal cavity and then we use the lining of the abdominal cavity, acting it as an artificial kidney to actually remove toxins from the blood of the patient. It then needs to educate the patient and also the carer to do fluid exchanges using specialised fluid four to six times a day. Some patients use an automated machine for peritoneal dialysis and that is only performed at night. The last mode of renal replacement therapy is called renal transplant. This mode of renal replacement therapy gives the best quality of life to our dialysis patients. But unfortunately, the numbers of kidney transplants performed in Malaysia is small due to the lack of donors. The typical waiting time for a kidney donor is about 5 to 8 years. If you want to know more about specific treatment for kidney disease, and if you want to know more about your kidneys, do see your doctor. As a kidney doctor, we cannot emphasize enough about the need to control risk factors, to make sure blood pressure is as optimum as possible, less than 140 over 90, always making sure that the blood sugar level is within normal range, HbA1c of 7%, reduce salt intake, avoid smoking, and maintaining a healthy lifestyle. And together with all these strategies, we hope to reduce the risk of developing kidney disease and most importantly, to reduce the need of actually undergoing this. You are responsible for the health and loving you will include loving the people around you. So help me by actually disseminating this information to your family and friends so that they too can start to protect their kidneys.